Hi, in this set of videos, we're going to solve uh, waiting lines problems. Um, we have uh, quite a variety here where I prepared for you some uh, problems uh, entailing uh, single servers, multiple server performance measures, and uh, we'll finish with the uh, ultimate um, uh, problem objective, which is cap uh, capacity design. Uh, these are all problems that you have seen um, similar to them uh, in the lessons uh, videos. However, this is a very good opportunity for you to practice on your own. So let's get started. All right, so we're starting with this problem. It's not a complex problem, but it has one aspect that I like a lot here, um, especially that this problem uh, has a sequel which is problem number two. And um, the learned lesson from these two problems um, is very important. Okay, so pay attention, please. So here, what do we have? We have a wholesale store. So usually these are very large stores, uh, similar to the big supermarkets that we have here, but much, much uh, larger. Um, they have two service desks. Okay, but I need you to read carefully, guys, what's happening here. One at each entrance of the store. What does it mean? How? Why this is very important? Because when students read two service desk, they will immediately uh, jump to the conclusion that this is a multiple server with M equal to two. But if you read the problem carefully, guys, okay, you can see that you cannot read that as multiple servers because we are assigning every desk or we are locating one desk at each entrance of the store. So imagine that you have a very large store, very, very large, all right, where you have located one service desk here, okay, because there's an entrance here, and then there's an entrance, let's say, on the other corner facing another street, okay, so you have located another one. So people will be waiting in front of each desk independently. So here what we have is two separate single server systems. And to answer the questions, you answer the question of any one of these. And it's going to be almost the same for the other because remember in um, waiting lines, we work on averages. All right, so we can see here that in part A, we are asking how often is each service desk idle? And in the next slides, we have other questions. But before that, remember that we always ask, uh, ask, ask answer, sorry about this, answer uh, basic questions, uh, fundamental questions. What is M? What is lambda? What's a mu? And then we find the ratio of lambda over mu. For what is M, I have already answered this for you. Okay, so it's M equal one. All right, I did not write it here because I thought that you will uh, figure it out from my explanation. So what are we given here? We are given that the time between arrivals, okay, is six minutes. Okay, what where do we read that? Here we go, customers arrive at each service desk at an average of one every six minutes. And we call that time between arrivals or inter-arrival time. It's six minutes and it's variable. It follows a exponential distribution, which means from that what we can get, we can get lambda, the arrival rate, right? Which is what? It's one over six. And then I multiply it by 60 and I get 10 customers per hour. So that's my lambda. What else are we given? We're given the service time is four minutes. Okay, it's here on the second line. And what what do we, uh, so let me write it down here. So the service time is four minutes. From that, as we have learned also in all the uh, lesson slides that we can get mu because mu is one over the service time and multiplying it by 60 will make it in hours, which matches the time unit that I'm using with my lambda. Right here, I have hours. So I have to show mu in hours. So that's it. We have lambda, we have mu. Let's uh, finish it up by finding the ratio lambda over mu 0 
we are going to uh, use that a lot. So how often is each service desk idle? What's that? What's the percentage? When, when do you think a service desk is idle? It's idle, of course, when there's no one in the facility. There are no customers, which means this is what? How do we find that? The percentage of time. This is a probability, right? So this is a probability of zero customers. So that's P0, all right? Here we go. So it's P0. And how do we find P0? This is a single server, and the P0, um, the P0 uh, formula is very simple. It's 1 minus lambda over mu. And this is the ratio that we found on the top, 0 0.67. So P0 is 0 0.33. And this is how often is every service desk is idle. Okay, now we have two more questions. How many customers on average are waiting in line in front of each service desk? So this is what? This is LQ. And remember, this is a single server. And we know that LQ, formula for single server is this, lambda square over mu mu minus lambda. We have everything, we plug everything in place, and we get 1.33 customers. Remember, do not round, all right? Because these are on averages, and it's very important that you keep it like this. Then, Part C, how much time does a customer spend at the service desk? Waiting plus service time. So what's that? This is WS, right? And what do we know about WS? It's equal to waiting in line plus the service time. So let's find WQ because we have already LQ and we know that WQ is LQ over lambda. It's a basic relationship. We just found one point, uh, LQ to be 1.33, so this is 0 0.133 hours, which I would like to convert into minutes because it's more interpretable. So that's eight minutes. Now I'm ready to find WS. I just add to the, my waiting in line the service time, which is four minutes given to us in the first slide, right, on the top. So, and here we go, it's here on the third line. It's four minutes, it's given. So we get WS to be 12 minutes, all right? So that was pretty much easy. Uh, the only difficulty that you may have faced that you may have assumed that it's uh, a multiple server with M equal to, which is wrong. All right, so let's move on to the second problem, which is a sequel of that. All right, so what's happening in this uh, sequel problem, remember? So it's a sequel, meaning that we're talking about the sta same store, the same manager. Now the manager is considering consolidation of the two service desk, meaning that he wants to put them in the same place. Remember, we, we had something like that, okay, where we have a huge store with one service desk at this entrance, another one at this entrance, and each one is serving different waiting lines or sorry different uh, uh, waiting line system now he wants to cancel this he wants to cancel that and he wants to move the two server desk to one common area where of course then the server who used to be here he will move here the server who was here he will move there of course and they will be serving in one area. So what do you think now? Here we go. Everybody will be there. Now, question A, we're asking how many customers on average are waiting in line. But before that, let's define the parameters of our system. What's M, what's Lambda, what's Mu? So what do you think? Do we have any changes in these parameters? Think, think about it very carefully here. All right, so what's happening here is that when we move the two service desk from to, to the common area, of course the arrivals that used to arrive on each desk, so we used to have 10 customers per hour arriving here. Now they will come here, they will not see the desk, so they will proceed to the common area. 
and the same here we used to have here 10 now they, are, they cannot see their service desk here so they will proceed to the common area which means what we are merging the arrivals so we have here lambda 1 which is 10 and we have there lambda 2 which is also 10 and what do we have here we have a big lambda or whatever you call it which is the sum of lambda 1 and lambda 2 okay that requires some understanding of the situation that we have and that's all all right so now i have a multiple server with m equal to and the arrival rate of course as i just explained it will sum up so we have lambda equal 20 customers per hour now all right this is very important this is the only change of course in addition to that now m is equal to 2 and mu remains the same nothing changed remember our definition for mu is the service rate that can be provided by every server regardless where the server is located and of course our famous ratio lambda over mu is now 1.33 because lambda changed how many customers on average are waiting in line what do we have here this is lq how do we find lq for multiple server we're going to use the table all right so for simplicity i'm going to assume that lambda sorry uh, for simplicity when i look at the table i'm going to look for the value of lambda over mu in the table that's closest as closer to 1.33 we're not going to get 1.33 exactly okay so for that in the table i will go for 1.3 because i have I have either 1.3 or 1.4 but because 1.3 is closer to 1.33 I'm going to take that one and I just read the LQ which is 0 0.951 okay we have two more questions that we're going to answer but now we have all the basic information so in these two questions the first part we're asking about the time that the customer will spend at the desk waiting plus service time so which is what it's ws to find ws as we did in problem one we first find wq because we know that ws is wq plus the service time and service time is given to us so wq lq over lambda lq we just found it in the previous part which we read it from the table so it's this over lambda of 20 remember lambda changed here and I multiply by 60 to get it in minutes. Now I add it to my service time. I get 6.9 minutes. And the question is, do you think we have to go ahead with this consolidation? Of course, we'll go for it because it's reducing the service time from, it was around 12 minutes. It was 12 minutes exactly in the previous part, in the previous problem. And now it's 6.9 minutes. So certainly we'll go ahead with this decision. All right, we have more problems. 